Hey, today we're going to make some modular control panel set pieces. Low cost, high impact. Let's go. Hey, how's it going? Anthony Fromm here, Great Sci-Fi. So today, making another set piece for my next sci-fi short film, Starfisher. With this one, I'm going to use AI, but in a very assistant way. I have no money. I do this stuff on a shoestring. Would an assistant make my stuff better? Yes. Does an AI assistant make my stuff better? Yes. Right, so I'll explain that more. So I'm using AI to kind of help me come up with a design, to help me come up with some text, and then to help me visualize what I'm going to do. But all these things I tweak, all these things I put hands on, all the, I don't know why I'm <laughs> advocating for AI, but I almost feel like I have to because I feel like a lot of people that bash it don't really use it and they just you know and understandably they think well you just press a button and the thing is there and you're ripping off other people's work first of all no <laughs> it's not like star trek you don't like press a button and, and the thing is there and second of all you know i would never reference a specific artist work but if i'm going to make something and i'm not sure how to make it i'm going to look at reference images to get some ideas and that's exactly what ai does now you could debate that in the comments. I'm not advocating for it, but I'm, I'm enjoying using it as somebody without a budget that has it now as an assistant that I can never afford, afford to elevate my work. Anyway, that's enough about that. It's, it's a hot button topic. <laughs> but let's talk about what I'm doing. So we're going to turn this into a couple modular control panels. So what I need, let's get to the heart of it. So what I need is what I experienced on Wakener. Sometimes there's like dead spots because you don't really know until the day like what shot looks the best. You, you plan for it, you do storyboards, you have discussions, you walk around the space, but then it's the moment of truth. The actor's there, you're in the set, it's lit, and you're moving the camera around and you're like, oh, you know what? That's the shot right there. And because the set was sort of locked in, I end up with a lot of spaces that maybe the deep background wasn't the most interesting, or maybe there wasn't anything there at all. So for my next project, right, we learn, we evolve. I want to make these control panels that mean nothing. They're never being a hero shot. They're just sort of like, you know, like Star Trek, Star Wars, right? When there's just all this beep boop bop in the background. Space 1999 is one I think about a lot. So I just wanted to make my own. And what the why I call them modular is because these are going to be little self-contained units. So that one, if this was the shot and we're shooting and it's like, oh, maybe it just needs something, right? This would just be like over there, just going bleep, 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 just to add a little visual interest to the shot, right? So, like I said, I um, I use AI to come up, I'll, and I'll go through all this, to, to come up with sort of like the design. I used AI to come up with the text because you're never going to see the text, so I just wanted like science-y made-up words, right? So there's that and then um and then that's pretty much it oh and then i use the laser cutter and um some electronics from harbor freight and it's all pretty simple pretty basic and i was really happy with the result but let's just get into it <laughs> check it out all right so we jump right into the computer big journey is the ai that i like to do images. There's lots of different ones now, but I've been using this one for a while. And all I'm telling it to do is do a simple vector. And I was thinking about the, the details that I wanted in this. And I thought, you know what? Oh, like a subway map. So I told it to make like a fantasy futuristic subway map. Gives you an option. And then, you know, you got a tweak. You can like re-roll it, right? You remix it. So I do like a bunch of different versions pretty straightforward right it's all about the prompts so me thinking about prompting it to make a subway map was sort of that was the thing for me so i came up with a couple of versions that i like and this is what i was talking about why ai is not a magic button it's like i'm still going to have to tweak the ones that i came up with 
or the AI came up with. So I have a few different ones and, I, and I'll tweak those. So now I'm gonna go into ChatGPT and I want like, you know, 15 words to put in the background, the text, but it doesn't matter, right? This is not a hero shot. This is not, this is why I like AI because I'm not writing, this has nothing to do with the script, right? So I, I can't spend, I could, like before I would spend like two hours coming up with 15 words to be in this background um, sort of set piece that you'll never read, but I know it'll add a nice level of detail. And then I just spend a, you know, a couple, I mean, this is sped up, but I probably spent like five or 10 minutes on chat GPT. And I was like, you know, give me 15 words that I could just put on this panel. They don't mean anything. I want them to be sci-fi ish. And, um, I was able to achieve that pretty quickly. So now I go into Photoshop to choose sort of the final image and I, I land on this one. And now I know I'm gonna have to do a little cleanup work on it because it's not 100%. And I think that's how you can tell like AI, like when it's lazy, right? You can, you can kind of tell people just click the button and it's like, it's okay. But just doing this little extra work where I was like, okay, this one works, but I'm just gonna have to clean it up. Like, I don't know what the AI was thinking. Like, oh, here's some foot pass or something. Those didn't really work for me. And here, where all these little circle or subway stops are, I guess, that's where I'm going to create a map that when I go into the laser cutter, it's going to, so it's going to etch that subway path. And then this, it's going to uh, cut out a circle for my LED lights. And there with those squares, I'm just, again, altering the AI. And it's just, I'm just filling in space there because it felt like, okay, this is not, quite filling out this space and then I'm gonna have a couple random lights there and again broke a record this is just deep background so I'm already doing too much detail for a deep background but I think that's what elevates your project there's little reveal of what the map is that will tell the laser cutter to cut out holes and I, sh I showed this on other videos if you if you don't recall the other videos like so vector is an easy way to do quick 3d printing to do quick laser cutting because with a vector image it's just creating a path that uh the machine will follow and you can do these pretty easily and especially now where i'm going to share with you um and i share this in a lot of my videos where i go to this free online website so i have a jpeg and i convert it into a vector file it's that easy and it's a black and white image so it always goes real quick here it is i bring it into my laser cutter software lightburn that's sort of the map telling me what it's going to cut and how it's going to cut. There it is on the laser cutter. Boom, boom, boom. You, could you draw all this stuff by hand? Yeah, of course you could. But I have a laser cutter, so I use the laser cutter. And then now we're in the shop, right? <laughs> so for most of you, we've arrived at the part that you like. So uh, I should put a link. So everybody always talks about these palm sanders that I use. And I could never share that with anybody because I never knew where I got it. And then the other day, I found like a three pack on Timu. And, um, you know, this one's shaped like a mouse. And then, yeah, they're, I don't know. They're, I just love them. So here in my air. And what I'm doing here is just as I sand, because that etch is not too deep, I just blow it out to make sure I'm not erasing it. And there I use the nice Timu, uh, Timu. <laughs> I use the nice, the nice uh, spray paint that I like, the model spray paint for base coat. And then there um, I have the black and we got it. Whoa, wait a second. <laughs> That's right. This is my favorite air drying tool, my book. Check out my book, link in the description. <laughs> All right, so now I have the base to, to work with. I went with a gloss, I don't know why. Oh, I do know why. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to fill in the etch with silver paint. And what I like is I just glob it in there. And because I did a gloss finish, uh, finish I could just take a rag and just wipe that off and then it stays in. And again, another sort of benefit of my style of making where I'm always weathering things. You see, that's not, perfect but i like the effect because i'm going to weather anyway so any sort of residual silver that's just sort of left behind is fine with me now if this was like a more i always pick on star trek a more star trek like pristine thing uh, i would have to be a little more careful with this process and use more solvents and probably do three or four more steps but for my purposes 
deep background, this is fine. And I'm taking the air. I don't know if I show it or not. Um, by doing this wiping off, I do get a couple like um, of those holes get filled up with paint. So I'm just sort of blasting them out, trying to not make a mess. And there it is. And like, yeah, you see how it shimmers in different light. So what I'm probably going to do is um, after I clean it up, I needed the gloss in order to be able to wipe off the silver. And now I'm just hitting it with isopropyl alcohol to just kind of do a final pass of like, well, let me just clean up what I can without destroying what I've done. And then now that I'm done using the gloss to be able to wipe off the paint, I'm going to, I'm going to hit it with a matte because I want it to be matte because it's a background piece. So here I'm creating the box. I could have cut out uh, pieces of, of wood with the laser to create like a box. I, I don't know. I just was like, you know what? Let me just use foam. Um, I think the reason I wanted to use foam is you'll see later on, uh, I'm going to create like a back plate. And I wanted this to be all lightweight because the whole idea with these is just to put them in random places on the set where they're needed. So the less cumbersome they are, the more effective they'll be for my needs. So here I'm just trying to space them out. And, and you see me do this a lot on the channel. It's like, so I want to create a lip and it's like, you know, you measure stuff, but I'm like, okay, it's going to be, uh, <laughs> and I'm using super glue to attach these pieces of foam. This piece of tape is how wide the lip is going to be because that's how wide the tape is. And I, and you'll notice I do that a lot. I just think it makes things easier, move along faster. And actually these strips, I don't think I mentioned they're, you know, the width of a ruler <laughs> because I could just bang them out by putting a ruler and making them the size, same size as the ruler. That's why they're that width. You know, I, I talk about that stuff a lot on this channel where it's like, when you're, you know, when you're presenting a build and it's editing and I'm doing this voiceover and there's music and it's all cut together, I, I want to keep, you know, sort of reiterating the reality is it's that width because that's how wide the ruler is and that was easy. The lip indentation is that much because that's how wide the piece of tape is I have. And now I'm just, because it's not square, I'm just labeling my pieces, which are which. And here I'm just cutting a rough 45 because it's foam. Foam is very pliable, so we'll be able to squeeze them together. So those don't have to be like a miter cut. As long as I get them in the ballpark with super glue, I can squeeze them together and they'll be fine. So here we're just creating this foam um, box. I got the, um, the super fast super glue, CA glue. So I'm kind of moving along here. I didn't mean to get that. I, I like like the 10 second. I think this is like the three to five second. But yeah, when you're making this kind of stuff, uh, CA glue and the kicker is your friend. So here I'm just making a box and trying to not stick my fingers, which I'm sure for two days after this, I had crunchy fingers. <laughs> And there it is, my little box. So now we got to look at it and think, all right, now we got to add more pizzazz. But before we do that, because I overbuild, and I talk about this all the time, is I'm doing hot glue to make this thing as indestructible as possible. And, uh, you know, it's worth re-mentioning because I'd set things will break and it's a huge you know if this was just on my wall in the basement in my man cave and it fell off the wall no big deal but if i have a whole crew we're shooting things are rolling lights I'm paying for lunch and paying for people this thing falls off the wall and breaks that's a huge problem right so it's always worth it to overbuild so now i just got to hit because i went with foam i got to hit it with a just a quick coat of plaster dip so that the paint will stick to it properly you always got to treat the foam you could use Mod Podge. And then here, I'm just gonna paint it flat black. Nothing fancy, it's just the back. And here, I'm, I'm creating a template because um, I'm going to be um, dealing with the inside of this now. And because I don't know if I've mentioned it or if you picked up on I'm I'm kind of making two at the same time as I'm doing this. So there, pizza, pizza. <laughs> 
So I um, am thinking, anytime you see me doing that, I'm thinking. So now I just ran to film tools, side quest, got to get some gels. Typically I have some on hand, but I was out, so I went and bought some. You don't have to do this. I've done stuff before where I've gone to the dollar store and bought like a blue plastic pencil case or something and cut that apart and use that as a gel. Or uh, like in the dollar store, you can get like the the craft paper, you know, for, for doing like gift baskets. You can be creative, you know. Or don't use any at all. Spoiler alert. Um, this will all be for nothing. But I do like to keep in my process so you can see how I'm thinking. It's a fluid process. Sometimes things work better than expected. Sometimes things work not at all as expected. And here I'm just putting in uh, this uh, piece of gel and I got a flashlight and I'm like, oh yeah. So now it's sort of like you have this idea in your head and when you get to that stage, it's always very exciting because it's like, oh, all right, this is working. Now it's a video. <laughs> and here I'm just taking the, I like the grease pencils. I picked those up at Film Tools too. They were a dollar point of purchase. And I'm just, I don't want it to be like one solid color with the gel. So I just sort of mapped out just a couple areas. And again, it's deep background. So I'm not being so sort of crazy about this. I'm just kind of doing it in general. And then I'm just doing a little yin and yang action here. Taking one from this gel, putting it over there to that gel. Bing, bang, boom. Now I'm adding some packing tape because you always use packing tape on gels. No, <laughs> because in the box by my feet is the packing tape. So I'm using, pa but it makes sense. Again, I, I like to talk about that on these videos where most of this stuff is just sort of figuring out and using like what I have on hand. Like it could have been scotch tape. I don't know. It could have been clear shelf paper. But there, you know, that's not perfect, but it doesn't matter because all this is doing is altering the light coming through the holes so that it's not white light, which in this case is not what I want. I want like these blues and greens. And, you know, spoiler alert, this is all really for nothing. But <laughs> now I'm running the flashlight over that. And whenever I run the flashlight over that, I'm like, I get excited because it's like, okay, this is going to work, right? That's, that's the moment when I see that where I'm like, okay, all right, we could do this. We could do this. So I'm thinking about it and thinking about it. And I'm like, well, yeah, that'll work. So I'm going to glue it with some Super 77. Good stuff. It's basically like spraying rubber cement. And you get one shot, eh, maybe one and a half shots. Get it in there. It's all looking good. And of course, you can't see, but maybe there's like one hole that didn't get covered and I'll have to like futz it around to make that work, but it's all good. Here I'm just making sure that it is a forever seal. <laughs> and that's the paper from the gel. I always save those papers like sticker paper to, to flatten out a sticker. And then there it is. You see it's all bubbly and wonky but that's fine that's backstage so now we hop over a side quest to harbor freight get my fairy lights i love my fairy lights these are 7.99 i love them there's tons of animation they're super lightweight because they're copper wire or copper yeah it's wire i guess they're easy to sort of form into whatever shape or space that you want um Another spoiler alert, I am going to abandon these, but <laughs> I like to show warts and all process um, how I arrive at things. So here I'm just sort of, you know, this is the way I imagined it. It's got some great animations on this. I'm looking at it to see like, is this just going to fill this whole area with the light and that's it? Or this is what I've done in the past. Like I've, I drill the holes. I've done this on like a, a pegboard before in Wakener and the idea is I'm just going to take each of these LED lights. It's painstakingly, it's going to take a minute. And sometimes it's worth it. And I'm just going to tape a light over each hole, right? So I start doing that. And it seems like, you know, that was the idea. 
But then I quickly see that, okay, these lights aren't powerful enough to sort of penetrate the gel. Um, so, and they're too hot right against the gel. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just make a nest. I'll still get my animation. And this is me testing that out. And then this is me saying like, oh yeah, it does. I mean, it works, but it's like, yeah. So here's the Wakener set. And you see, these are those same lights. You see how those are working? But it's there's no gel in front of them. So I'm like, huh. So here, actually from Wakener, I had a couple more boxes of these lights that I didn't use, right? So that's why you hoard and save. Um, these are more like Christmas tree light size. So I'm thinking, okay, if my, my new way of approaching this is just to stuff it with a bunch of light, but light that I can animate to, to add some interest, I'm gonna go with these ones. The This one doesn't have a remote, but that's fine for what these are. I'm just gonna, on the day, I'll just pick an animation, stick it on the wall. It only has to last for like, a, you know, 10 or 12 hour shoot day, 16 hours sometimes. <laughs> and that's it. So now that I have uh, these sort of Christmas tree style lights, I'm like, I'm going to put a back piece on, but this ends up being uh, more beneficial than I thought initially, because once I put this back piece on, then it occurs to me too, like, oh, if I make that reflective, that's going to add a little pop. Um, this piece is not square, so it's just nice to put a little arrow so I don't have to think about it every time. So now I got the um, aluminum tape, metallic tape, use this stuff a lot get a lot of use on it sometimes i get it from like the home center pay a lot of money for it sometimes it's at the dollar store it's uh good stuff so what i'm doing here is just this sort of back panel i know that if i just put this reflective tape on here it's going to help our situation it's going to bounce that light all over the place and make it nice so here I'm, it's sort of like, it's not a string of lights. It's more like, like a waterfall of lights, I guess. But again, so I just want to try to fill as much of, of that space. And now I'm testing out the animations and they're very similar to the, to the fairy light, the lightweight one. So yeah, like something like that, that'll be nice again for the background. So I'm putting in my reflective piece again. This is, uh, in my mind, is going to make it better. We'll see. And it does. And you see there, right? It's like, so I should have not even used the gels because you, you can't even really see a color difference. But that's fine. You can see, yeah, there's a little color difference, but it's good. I'm happy with this. Pretty cool. I like it. But before I show you the detailed shots of what we just made, um, I wanted to practically show you... Uh, so here I'm on, these are the actual set pieces. They're just sort of in the corner of my shop as I build them. But I wanted to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So here I am and right here, you know, that's interesting, but maybe we can make it better, right? So let's put those in and there you have it. Very simple, very subtle, but in the film, it's just a little thing back there. And like I said about the, the text, the way we generated the text, you're never gonna see that text. But the details, you know, over the years, the details, I, they do matter. You're never gonna see that text. Is there text there? Yeah. Does it make it better? I think so. And more is more. Two of them, twice as good. <laughs> and this is, you know, interview video lighting, the, the lighting for the film would be more dramatic, right? So let's... All right. Nice. All right, now let's take a look at the detail shot. And then again, you know, like I always say, you're never gonna see these like this, but here's the detail. There's those letters, those words that we made up. And those are just to add a little detail that you never see, but they're there. And I'm very happy with the way this turned out, yeah. Very cool. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. And again, 
you know, use AI as an assistant, not as the thing, not as the magic button. Anyway, it's, it's up to you, right? So I hope you enjoyed that. You know, I, I'm running out of props and costumes to make for my new short film, which is a good thing. But, you know, if you check out my book, I kind of talk about that process that I go through where it's like, okay, I don't have a budget for the film. So I start making the costumes. I start making the props. I might even start making the set pieces. And those are just weekly things where it's like $10 there, $20 here. And that's my thing, right? It's like, I don't go, obviously, I'm not a rock climber. I don't go bowling. I don't go hiking. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a potter. I'm not doing, you know, making the sci-fi, that's my thing. So, you know, 20 bucks here or there, that's, that's fine. And that's kind of, it's just a little touch, but that's sort of the philosophy that I go into in the book. But, got the book, got the Patreon, check out the Patreon, all that stuff helps. Like, share, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> you know the drill. But regardless of that, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. Hey, I'm just the avatar, but you might want to check out this video, maybe that video, for sure subscribe if you haven't, and check out the merch, buy some merch that really helps. But hey, what do I know? I'm just the avatar. <laughs>